Dun, dun, dun. Okay, it is recording. So, welcome. This is part two um, of getting started with Minecraft. My name is Tara. Can you uh, just let me know? Did you come to? You came to part one, correct? Yes. Uh huh. Okay. Perfect. Um, and then, as we get started, were there any questions that you had from part one? No, it was very clear. Okay, excellent. Um, so then we will start by looking at finding lessons because finding lessons that are already built is like the greatest thing ever. So with finding lessons in Minecraft, the first thing that you want to do, and I'll throw this link in the chat. And welcome, Patty. All right, and um, if you're just now joining, go ahead and let us know where you're coming in from. That would be great. All right, so what's really nice with the lessons here is that when I go into the lesson search, I can search by age level, um, and I can also search by subject. So anybody wanna give me an age or a subject? Eight. I was gonna say eight to 10. <laughs> Okay, eight to ten. Got it. And then, and then there's a lot of um, subjects that are really cool. So, is there a favorite one that you have for that age level? Because animals? No, that's a little younger. Well, I guess I'm a computer um, instructor, so I would focus on probably geography or digital citizenship. Okay, so let's start with geography. What's really nice here is that these lessons are already created. So it's one less thing that has to be done. Um, and you can also, let's say that you see this world biomes lesson here. You can view the lesson. And if you're signed in with your Microsoft account, you can actually um, download that, upload that, print it out, do all the things. You can also, when you're signed in, capture notes about this particular lesson. So it's almost like um, like if you get meal prep boxes, like I get HelloFresh and Home Chef and Green Chef and all of those. And so I'll, I'll save the recipe card, but then I'll put some notes on it saying like, you know, it was better with steak than with um, eggs or fish. Um, yeah. So... This tells you everything from the guiding ideas of like the big idea as uh, in addition to what types of questions to ask the students. So if you were doing this in a hybrid or a remote learning way, um, you could do a pre lesson and have the students ask ask the students about these types of things and have them take notes on what they um, what they know, what they need to find out. And then when they get down here to step three, they can create their own world. And the next session, we'll go over how you can do um, grading, grading and assessments with Minecraft EDU. Um, but here, it, it gets them to think like, what is the blueprint of my world going to look like? So when I create something, what needs to be in it? Why does that matter? what things are dangerous for it, what things are safe for it. So what does my whole world need to look like? And then um, what the students end up doing is they would make a blueprint of that and then turn that blue that blueprint block by block um, into their world on Minecraft EDU. So that is just a little look at how the lessons work. All right. Now, the other thing that we're going to look at today is challenges. So before I get into challenges, though, um, I noticed that some more people came in. So does anybody have any questions about what we did in part one with getting started last week? OK, if you have any questions as we're going through, feel free to stop me and we'll get those all squared away. All right, there are a couple of different modes. So we'll come back to the challenges in just a moment. 
um, because it's important to know what the differences are between the two different modes in Minecraft. So you have the creative mode and the survival mode. With the creative mode, there are a lot more um, things that students can do because it's all about creative versus think of survival mode as though it's the TV show survival where like you only have the certain things that you can work with um, and you've got to watch out for <clears throat> other things that might come in the way, right? So um, there might be mobs, there might be fires and falling and drowning and um, things get like the players might need to eat, different things like that. Hey, Patty. Yeah, no worries. If you missed the class last week and if any of this is like, whoa, what are we talking about? I am happy to go back because this um, this whole master course was all about getting started. So we'll get deep enough for you to be able to take this and turn it into something to use with your students. But per, for this particular master course, a master class, we're not going to get into like the coding um, because there's a coding side of, of Minecraft EDU. And um, we won't touch that during this master course. We'll save that for another time. So don't worry. And I teach the way that I like to learn and I like things to be like broken out, broken down, but I like to try and mess up and try again. So yeah, hopefully you're cool with that. <laughs> All right, so um, in the creative world with Minecraft EDU, you have unlimited items that you can choose from an unlimited inventory. So just like we were looking at last week and I'll go over it again today, um, when you add things from your inventory to use, when you're in creative, you can add as many things as you want that'll fit within your little um, inventory kit. With survival, you're stranded with nothing. Like you have to build what you wanna build and you don't get as much of an inventory as you have um, in creative. Another really great thing with creative, a reason why I like it, is because you can fly. And when you can fly, when you're in Minecraft, if you remember from last week, and we'll look at it again today, um, when you're in Minecraft and you're flying, you're able to see from this aerial view that you can't get unless you're up in the air flying. Um, so that is a really nice thing about creative. Also, um, difference between creative and survival, there's no monsters in creative. So you don't have to worry about, oh no, it's gonna come get me. There's nothing out there to get you. So you can be nice and peaceful and just focus on creating. Um, and also in creative versus survival, in creative, your character doesn't die. Like it can't die. Like nothing is going to spawn out and make it die. Um, whereas in survival, the opposite of survival is not surviving. Um, yeah, so it depends on what lives in the world um, when you're in survival mode, okay? All right, does anybody know about sustainable development goals? All right. Um, I will take that as a no. So sustainable development goals are um, goals that replaced the Millennium Goals. Does anybody remember the Millennium Goals? Okay, um, so if you are interested in the Sustainable Development Goals, um, it is something that the UN United Nations put together um, with a couple of other groups and they have, they are 17 goals in all with a goal of them being completed by the year 2030, which is about 10 years away. So what's really awesome is that um, sustainable development goal number nine is all about innovation and infrastructure. And oftentimes in my talks, I'll talk about, I'll do talks on sustainable development goals and education and how we can empower students around problem-based learning instead of just projects. Like what's the purpose of the project? That's a lot of P words. So um, to have a purposeful project, 
if it is linked to a problem that students have to solve where they create a solution in some way, um, then that's excellent because it sticks with the students. They can say, hey, I made a difference. I designed something, I did something, I had an effect on something. Um, so if you're interested in sustainable development goals, innovation and, and infrastructure is all about building in the real world um, different infrastructures that withstand natural disasters and things like that. Um, updating things, making things like, um, like like the airport in Singapore, for example, if you're familiar with the airport in Singapore. Um, so there's a lot of innovation there. There's a butterfly garden, there's a waterfall, there's like all of this stuff that attracts tourists. Um, so innovation and infrastructure, linkage in the curriculum, problem-based, project-based, excellent opportunity for students to learn. Another thing that we talked about last time that I wanted to show you today is this video. So has anybody heard of the um, how UC Berkeley did their graduation ceremony this year in Minecraft? All right, I'm gonna take silence as no. <laughs> So we'll watch this, it's a short video, but it goes through um, how the students came up with the idea and how they put it together. So this is especially good if you are the teacher of a high school students or, um, or even university students, maybe even middle school students, right? How can you get them to put together a graduation event in Minecraft? No sound. Okay, awkward. Let's do this. All right, hold on, let's do this. If I, I'll copy this link. Um, I'll let it finish playing out with the, um, with the CC uh, settings on, but I'll throw the YouTube link in here so that you have access to it. Because I think what's important is what they're saying, but then also, like, look at how detail-oriented their whole structure was.
Okay, so, well, that video basically, um, and I threw the link in so you'll have access to it um, since the sound wasn't working on the recording end. Um, but that was a group of college students who got together and said, you know, we're not going to let what's going on in the world stop us from doing graduation in some way. And when I first saw that, it reminded me of Ready Player One. Um, has anybody seen Ready Player One or read about it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'm um, having a problem typing. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's like, oh, it's really quiet. <laughs> um, yeah, but Ready Player One, like, uh, if you've read the book, even if you've seen the movie, I think they, uh, parts of the movie hold pretty true to the book. Not most of it, but some of it. Um, but, you know, if you just put yourself in that imagination of, like, what would it be like if those students actually created that simulation of a graduation, even though that, even though there was social distancing going on, they were able to create this in an online community so that it didn't feel like, oh, well, you graduated, but you didn't really graduate. Or like you graduated, but you didn't participate in a graduation. Um, so that's one idea. I know it's a little late because um, most of our students have already graduated for the year, but you know, it could also work as a welcome back, right? Start in the new school year. Hey, check out our world. All right, so who, um, do we have anybody in the group who currently has Minecraft EDU? I'm gonna check this before I get into the challenge. If you just wanna type it in the chat, if that works, or you can come off mic, that's fine. All right, and while you're doing one of those two things, um, so with the challenges, whoops, with the challenges on Minecraft EDU, what I really like, so you get to them in the same place, you just go to class resources and instead of doing find a lesson, you say find a challenge. So what's really nice with, load, there we go. What's really nice with the Minecraft EDU challenges is that you can look at it as problem-based learning, right? So what is the goal? What needs to be built? It's unlike the lessons because in the lessons, it's more of a do this, now do this, now do this. What you'll notice with the um, challenges is that it is very much like here's a sentence of what to do and now do that. So if we looked at this harvest time, for example, and you get into the details, What's nice here is like it sets up this scenario of imagine if, right? You're in this world, food production needs to be optimized. Um, it's super important. What's cool here is that it doesn't say begin here, then do this, then do this, then do this, okay? Um, what we'll look at is actually this green building here. So with the green building, if anybody is in the group, um, let me know. And what I'll do is when I set this up in Minecraft, um, we can collaborate on this because this is actually a group challenge. So the group is to build a new home that uses some of these different techniques, right? So we don't all live in green buildings. So how can a student make an environmentally friendly building? Where are they gonna put their trash? Where are the animals gonna live? Where are the children going to live, right? Um, so we'll make this world in one moment. And if you have Minecraft EDU, then I'll invite you in so that you can see what it's like to collaborate in a world. Um, if you don't wanna collaborate, that's fine. You can create your own. All right, so the one thing, and then here are a couple of other challenges. So if I were looking for the design an animal one, then all I would do is go to the challenges. Oops, scroll, there we go. Put in the keyword, say animal. 
and search. And then the design and animal one would appear. Okay, so I picked out four, four that are pretty easy comparatively um, and that don't require a whole, whole lot of time. And by a whole, whole lot of time, I mean you're not making a graduation for students, right? You're not making a graduation ceremony. Um, it's either designing an animal, doing a green building, a desert island, or um, a community landmark, right? And there's a lot of different connections that you can make to culture um, and just the economy as a whole right now with any of these um, with any of these challenges. Okay, when you create your blueprint, a couple of things that you want to remember is to describe your build. So what characteristics will it have to meet the challenge? Right? If it is, for example, the green building, you can look at the extensions and say, okay, it needs things that are environmentally friendly. What are environmentally friendly things? And then you would take notes of what those things are before you start building. Another thing that's really helpful is to use graph paper. So when you use graph paper, it's very, it's, it's like you're using the analog version of Minecraft EDU. Minecraft EDU is broken up into different blocks, so is graph paper, okay? And then when you're using that graph paper, oops, it's also important to know that um, things that need to look rounded are going to look a little different because the blocks for the most part are pretty square. So how can you use enough squares to make a more rounded shape? Um, also, when you're making the blueprint, decide what blocks you will use and label them. By doing this and doing this pre-planning before creating, it saves time so that you can, it's almost like taking a shopping list to the grocery store. Like, all right, I need this many of this type of block and this many of this type and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, also, consider what will, your ori what will the orientation of your build be? Will it be flat like one level? Or will it be a standing structure that's several lay layers tall? And then figuring out where in the world, literally where in the world, um, you want to start building. Do you want to start building by water? Do you want to start building by a tree? And are you going to have enough space once you get into that world? And then with that, it's a matter of, well, what do I build first? Last week, we talked about building on the ground level, just building, the, putting your first few blocks, right? Once you make that foundation, then you can build up. You're not going to start in the sky and then work your way down. It's going to go ground up to the sky. All right. So let's start building. I'm going to switch over my screen share. The challenge that we are going to do, I will throw this in the chat so you can have it open. All right, and then can you let me know in the chat or come off mic as I'm uh, transferring this over um, if you are currently viewing this and you're on you're in Minecraft EDU, you've got it downloaded and everything. So yes, if you have it downloaded, and then let me start up my system. Okay, stop share and start share. Okay. All right, so here's what we'll do is right here, I have Minecraft EDU. I'm already launched into it. Last week we talked about changing the skin of your character. I'm going to change back to my original skin. Once I change, I need to click on confirm 
and then that'll save it. Over here in the settings, we went over these last week. I'll go over them quickly. You can enable the UI screen reader. This makes it more accessible for students who have a hard time reading what's on the screen. And what's beautiful with this is that even once they're in Minecraft and they're in the world and they're building, this screen reader will still work so that they know what the different words say. With the audio, I go here. I can make this super loud. I don't like it loud, so I wanna have it turned down because for me, it helps me focus better. I can also, if I have students who have a different native language, because remember with Minecraft, it's not that they're writing five paragraph essays, it's that they're building something. And maybe they're writing something to go along with it, but we're not grading them on the writing, we're grading them on the design if we're grading them at all. So in that way, if you're working with um, English language learners, and you wanted them to be comfortable in their language and their language was French, you could change this to French and it would change all of the words. And if you had the UI turned on for the accessibility, it says like, it says it in the language. It sounds a little computerized, but it says it, right? So even if like, I remember when I had a student who wasn't strong in their native language, nor were they strong in English, and that was back in my first full year of teaching, um, it read it to her. And once she heard it, she was able to understand it better. Let me change that language because that was a problem before. And it's like, let's not do French. I only know enough to be polite. And you can't hear it. Hmm. Okay. Well, I won't be doing anything with audio anymore. So that should be a mute problem. Um, yeah, if you can't hear me at any point, let me know. Okay, so to go into my worlds, I would click play. And then for this particular world, I'm gonna say create new, and I'm going to choose from a template. Now I can view more templates here. And I had already created this earlier, but if I wanted to view a challenge template, um, I could search for the word. So I'm gonna say green building and voila, so any of the things that are on the website for Microsoft Education Edition um, under the challenges, and you can find them in here. All right, so here it gives the description, it gives the objectives, um, it also gives the extensions of like how more, not extensions that are like plugins, but more extensions of how you can grow on understanding of topics. Okay, and so then I can go into create world. Now, mind you, this is best done if there's already a blueprint set up. So if you're having students do the pre-work of drawing out like a good architect, what they're going to build before they build it, then it'll be more comfortable for them. Once I'm put into my Minecraft world, your mouse now becomes what, um, let's see, your mouse now becomes your pointer in that wherever you move your mouse, that is where you can see the different blocks here, or not blocks, you can see the different spaces here. Last time we talked about how if you click, it breaks, but if you right click, it builds. It's not right clicking for me right now because you can see from the very bottom, I don't have an inventory. On the left hand side of my screen is all of my shortcuts for moving, for jumping, for flying. Um, and so what I'm going to do is hit the E button and then E is going to give me my inventory. 
I'm also going to search for grass and make sure that I add the grass in just in case if I get rid of grass somewhere. Now, when you're searching for your blocks, let's say that you're building a building. <laughs> and if you're building a building, maybe you want some stairs. Maybe you want the building to be green, but you want a different shade of green. Or you want part of it to be green and then you want to build up a bit. Every time that you grab a block, so you just click and then you click down and then it's there. If you want to get rid of one, you click on the one that's down, click it up anywhere and it disappears. Each time you do that, it gives you 64 of that block. If you want more, you can just add more. And if you run out, you can always go back when you're in creative mode and add to your inventory. So I'm gonna search for green and brown. And then, and if you use simple words, you tend to come up with more simple things. So I know that sand is a um, color and it's also part of a word called sandstone. So maybe that's part of it. All right, and we'll start there for now. Actually, we'll do one more. We'll make that silver. Okay. Once you're all done with the inventory, if you just click on the X here, then it's gone. Now, any time, so my pointer right here has the grass on it. If I do a two finger move, then the color will move. Whichever block is on the end right there that I see, that's gonna be the block that goes down when I do a right click. So I'm gonna navigate back to the grass. Okay, then I'm going to point and do a right click. Being on a mouse, com on a mouse computer, <laughs> being on a Mac computer with just a mouse pad um, for me, my right click is two fingers and just press once. All right, how are we doing so far? Excellent. All right, so another thing that I love about creative mode, and I've now said this three times, <laughs> is that you can fly. And if you can fly, that means that you get an aerial view. And if you can fly, that also means that you can go to different places way more quickly than running on the ground. So to fly, I'm gonna do a double tap of the space bar. If I double tap again, I stop flying. So double tap, and then if you wanna go higher, single, 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 single. Try saying that 10 times fast. Then to go forward, I'm going to hit the W because I see somewhere over here the land that I want to build on. And I want to build right here. All right. Now, when I go forward, let's say that there's a hole and I'm like, no, I want to fill that hole. Another cool thing that you could do is if you wanted to build a swimming pool or if you wanted to build a lake, you can make a hole, then fill it with the blue block. All right, so I've got to get a little closer. All right, so maybe I want to fill this up. And that's actually a little deep, so it might take a while to fill up. And maybe I don't want to fill that up. All right, let's just start over here. <laughs> All right, now let's assume that I have drawn out my blueprint and that I'm ready to start building. If I'm ready to start building, I can just build. Remember that you wanna have your foundation first. So right here, I wanna do one, two, three, four, five. I wanna have a five by five. I should have planned that out a little bit better, but it's okay. Oh no, that works. All right, you could build yourself into the 
building. And if you do that, then you can also just kind of fly out and get that aerial view. You can also build from up in the air. So when you're making that first foundation, go up a little, whoops, right click. I'll come back and fix that. All right. Now, for those of you that are using Minecraft EDU, if you wanted to have students collaborate on something, so for this particular challenge, students are supposed to collaborate to build together. So if you're on Minecraft EDU and you want to come collaborate with me, um, then let me show you what the code is to jump into this world to be a part of it. The very first thing that you're going to do whenever you want to set up a world that others can come into and collaborate with you in is any time that you want to exit for any reason. Right now I'm moving my mouse and you're like, why is she looking up in the sky? Well, if I'm by nature, I want to move my mouse to the right X to the red X in the upper left hand corner. Um, or to one of those things to minimize or to exit or anything like that. What you're actually going to do is you're going to hit escape. When you hit escape, you can go, well, first, let's look at one thing. So if, if the template world that you go into is not to your liking, meaning that the um, weather gets bad and there's things that are spawning and all of that, you can always go into the settings at any point, turn on, and remember, right on, left off, turn on your classroom settings, turn on perfect weather, and turn off the things that are annoying. If the mobs are, are annoying because they're getting in the way, do that. If you don't want destructive items, you can do that. Okay, then when you go back, voila. Now I can actually resume the game and you can see what? There are no spawns. There are no animals that I have to get rid of or work around. It's almost like you just put them in their fence, but instead you made them disappear. Now to host, what you want to do is over here on the left, you have the how to play, you have the settings, and you have where you can go to exit. Okay. I got here by hitting escape on my keyboard. Over here on the right where it says host, I can start hosting. When I start hosting, that means that other players can join my world. So if I was making a collaborative world for students to work on, I could start hosting the world and they could come in and work. Excellent, right? So I'm going to confirm. When I confirm, what it's going to tell me is that these are the codes. So if I hover my mouse over, I can see that it is balloon, rail, and water bucket. So in the chat here, I will put balloon, rail, and water bucket. I guess it would be helpful if I put commas in between. All right, so I am going to, so I'm hosting now and it won't stop hosting until I say stop hosting. I can also change the join code. So this is almost like, um, let's see, there's, there's some things that you use online with students. Um, I won't say the tool, but uh, sometimes you need to reset the code so that they don't join when they're not supposed to. This is kind of like that. If you only want some students to join, um, then you can host it, give them that code, and then change the code so that if they give it to their siblings or their friends, their friends and siblings aren't joining the world and destroying things or changing things. Okay, so that's one really cool thing about being able to reset the code. Now I'm going to go to resume game. Oops. I need to go into settings and right on always day. So remember, right on and it stays on. 
left off, then it stays off. All right, so always stay and we're good there. I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna go here. I'm going to save and exit. Okay, know that when you save and exit, it exits, it ends the, um, the game for everyone. Okay. Or it ends the session for everyone. The reason why I'm doing that is I want to show you what it looks like when you put a code in and where you go to do that. So we'll come back into that in just a moment. But right here, if I was to join a world, then I would say balloon, rail, water bucket, and then confirm. Now it's not going to let me in because that session is closed right now. Um, but if that session were still open, if I was still actively hosting it, um, then the student would easily be able to use that code to join into the session. All right, I'm going to go into my worlds. Uh, we're going to go into this one. And let's host. All right. Quick check because we're getting a little close to time. How are we doing? All right. Apple fish. All right, if you wanted to join this world, then that is the join code. I just put it in the chat there for you. And you enter that. So what I was just sharing, um, when you first launch into Minecraft, you can join a world. And that join the world one is where it'll prompt you to put in a three, not digit, but a three icon code. All right, when you are building, and I'll keep building, Patty, while you join, if you're joining. So you see from the aerial view, I can easily just kind of fly up and be like, yep, and voila. And I can also see what's above me. I can go forward, I can turn around. And once I've laid out my plan, then I can build up. Okay. Any questions on building? Oops. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Since we've looked at how you can collaborate within Minecraft, um, and since we've looked at lessons and challenges, the challenge, if you choose to accept it, is to create a green building using the green building challenge. You can really do any of the challenges, um, but green building is pretty easy comparatively. When you make that within, within this next week before our final master class, we'll use that project, that challenge, to focus on the assessment aspect of Minecraft. So the assessment aspect of Minecraft will empower students to capture images with a camera in Minecraft, to use a portfolio and a journal to write down things that they've learned and what their plan is, and to kind of tell a story about their process and be able to save that in a way that's out of Minecraft that's then submitted to you that you can then easily go and review and read and voila. Okay. So before we end for today, 
Do we have any questions? I'm going to switch over. Yep, so great question there. Um, let me close the window. Mm, that seems like the wrong window. Hold on. There we go. Okay. Um, so the question is, um, how much time is reasonable for students to complete these challenges? And it really all depends. It depends on the age of the students and their experience with Minecraft. So if it's a student who uses Minecraft in their free time, um, then 20 to 30 minutes is, is pretty good for, um, for building a home, especially because they're building it in a group. Now, if you assume that a group has four people in it, and instead this is a personal um, objective, so for having one student build a home, then I would just do the math here and then equate that to like maybe an hour or two with the different planning involved. There's other challenges, so design an animal, for example, and one thing to consider with these different, so most of the challenges are 20 to 30 minutes, but think of that as 20 to 30 minutes in Minecraft, not with just the blueprint. We did today's activity where I explained about the blueprint, but I didn't show you what my blueprint was, right? Because when you create a blueprint, it takes, it takes time. You've got to think. What colors do I need? What aspects of a herbivore or carnivore do I need? How can I make it camouflage? Um, how many of each do I need? Where am I going to place this object? So when students think about those things, the, pro the brainstorming aspect alone of any challenge, I would say, is typically a lesson, right? So think of what are all of the different challenges and draw it out. And then in the second lesson, um, remote, hybrid, in-person, however it ends up being, first challenge, um, sorry, for the first lesson, introduce the challenge and do like a group brainstorm of what are these things? Um, what are the elements? What is needed? And then for an assignment for students, have them share what their brainstorming is, right? have them share what inventory they need and a drawing of what their plan is. And then for the second lesson, that's when they do the challenge in Minecraft. So they start by building the blueprint and thinking, what is this going to look like? What does it need? What do I want it to have? And then once they get into Minecraft, it's all building and it actually flows really quickly. Um, last week, I shared the Black Lives Matter um, hashtag that I had created in Minecraft. And honestly, I mean, I had to go back and change a couple of letters because the spacing was off. It might have taken 45 minutes, maybe an hour, but that was also over a dozen different letters that I had to spell out. Depending upon the challenge and depending upon your students, it will depend upon if the Minecraft time is 20 to 30 minutes um, or if it's maybe double that. But you're right, Christina, like it feels short if there's no planning, but if there is planning, then the time in Minecraft doesn't really take that long. And then you would have a third lesson and the third lesson would be the assessment. It would be the extension here of having them take pictures and share it back in the class. Um, having them check out one another's different biomes. Having them write a paragraph about their creature and why they chose that creature with the different, um, the, the different characteristics and how that fits in the world that they built. 
So there's a lot of building that can go in um, to different Minecraft challenges. But when you're looking at building a building, it's literally just block, 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 right? Excellent. Yay. All right. And let's see. Is a screen capture video easy to grab? I'm wondering if it would be something they could use for their final. So yes, screen capture is in, um, in Minecraft EDU. It's pretty easy. It just depends on the computer. So like right now, being in Microsoft Teams, I was screen capturing what I was um, doing in Minecraft. And if you're a Microsoft school, they could use, they could set up their own team and have it do screen recording. And also depending upon the age of your students and the comfortability, but they could definitely do a screen capture where they're videoing um, everything in there. What we'll look at in the masterclass, and I can also answer during office hours, um, is how you can add the camera from the inventory and have your character in Minecraft take pictures of the different things and explain those different things. So speaking of office hours, um, if there were any questions that you had that we didn't address today, or you know, if you wanted a couple of days to practice and then come back and follow up and ask questions, um, then I'll have office hours at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time this Tuesday. Um, you can also catch me on Twitter. It's just at my, um, my not my hashtag, but my handle is just at Tara Linney, and I can answer questions um, in either place. And Christina, um, so great question. And this is a question that came up last week as well. In terms of the price, um, Minecraft has, Minecraft, EDU, and Microsoft have not announced any updates yet, and I don't know if they will, but at this point, um, the free trial, uh, well, Minecraft EDU um, is free until June 30th because of COVID-19. Um, afterwards, it becomes $5 per student. So... Yes, by Tuesday. Well, with Tuesday being June 30th, um, I'll see if anything has changed or if we can get an update. It would be really great, especially with hybrid learning, um, if there is something. But at this point, the only information that I have is that it's free until June 30th, which could mean anything. <laughs> Definitely means that it's free until June 30th, but always free for teachers would be so great. Um, yeah. All right, so you all have a great day wherever you are, and I hope to see you again for part three. And if in the meantime um, you have any questions, feel free to ask, and I will see you again next week. Recording.